a action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarah, you want to say hi to everybody? Sure. You're just using your first name so we don't breach your confidentiality and okay. a, uh, a hacker in Russia doesn't identify who you are and drain your bank account. And Very good. Uh, my name's Sarah and I'm from Western Kentucky. Um, I'm a nurse midwife and a women's health nurse practitioner. I had the MGB with Dr. Rutledge in 2001, March 1st of 2001. I was number 1214. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's uh, great. I never forgot that. Um, I weighed 334 pounds the day I had surgery and lost at my lowest point probably about 175 pounds. Um, I lost 152 pounds in the first year and uh, the pictures that are going around show the, the ones in the orange, That's that was my one year uh, post-op pics and then the, uh, the last one, the really skinny picture is my probably my lowest weight picture right before I had a tummy tuck. So um, at the lowest point that I got down to I had um, a hysterectomy, a tummy tuck, and mono all within a month of each other. So I got these are supplemental weight loss procedures. Correct. Um, so I had everybody having a fit that I was uh, too thin, too thin and, and all that. And uh, so then, I, as as everyone I know in my family who's had the surgery, as everyone has done, we all kind of reached our low point and then rebounded a little bit. And I've been at my where I'm at now for five or six years, give or take, 10 pounds up and down, so, and I'm kind of on the, probably the 10 pounds up right now, so we'll get that going back the other way, hopefully pretty soon, so that's my story. Now, a um, couple questions, what can you eat? What, everybody wants to know, what can you eat, so your diet now is pretty normal? Very normal. Um, I don't think really anyone who doesn't know that I had surgery would know that I had surgery. My quantities that I eat are pretty normal. Um, there's really not any food that I can't eat. If I eat too much sweets or too much sweet liquid, particularly on an empty stomach, um, that's the devil and that makes me feel really bad. So um, I have a little touch of the dumping um, depending on if I eat a little too much or if I get too many carbs or too much sugar, especially on an empty stomach. So I've kind of learned about that. When I have that, I get sleepy, um, my ears get stopped up, my nose runs, I feel a little queasy, my heart beats too fast, and I lay down for a few minutes and it, it goes away. So now that is what we call the dumping syndrome, and the, there are two kinds of dumping syndrome. One is you eat some sugary stuff, your sugar, your blood goes up, and your body releases too much insulin, then it goes too low. And then your brain doesn't work, you get kind of sleepy, you start to get sleepy. You can get fast heart rate because you're releasing epinephrine to get extra sugar out. In serious cases, you can pass out. Uh, your car can run off the road, you can fall down the stairs, so you want to be alert to that. Um, now, your sugars, you get your yearly blood tests? Yes, all normal. And your um, sugars are okay? Sugars are great, yeah. Now, you, did you say you were diabetic? I've forgotten. I was just right on the edge. I had a fasting running around 115, 120, 125, so just, just on the way. And now it's normal? Correct. Okay. Good. And your sister had diabetes? Yes. And her diabetes now is? Completely gone. Good. So her hemoglobin A1C is normal and all that stuff? Yes. Uh -huh. So just as a comment, diabetes is a pretty deadly disease. I mean, blindness, heart attack, you see that in your practice with the, the diabetic women. And uh, to imagine that in your sister's case, we cured her diabetes, that's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, we have big diabetes in my family too, partly from weight issues and partly, I'm sure, just because it runs in the family. But my mom's on insulin, my dad's on oral meds, so you know, it just runs in the family. So we're glad to be of that for as long as, as we can make that last. Right. Um, have you ever had the other kind of dumping where you eat a bunch of fried foods or a sandwich or something like that and you get that real upset stomach and pain and things like that? Maybe twice in nine years um, have I had that sort of thing and then ended up you know with an upset stomach, rented in the bathroom, all that, but that doesn't happen to me very often at because all. Because you're careful? I think somewhat because I'm careful. Now, um, the uh, the grease thing, the Agent Orange thing, oh yes. Uh, you'll so if you eat a lot of greasy foods, uh, it the will body me. can't digest it as well because of the bypass. So 
fried foods, greasy foods, butter, stuff like that, ice cream. You're allowed to eat some of that, but the fat in the past would be digested and deposited on your bottom or in your tummy or in the organs and the liver and things like that. And the surgery, because of the bypass, interferes with that. So you can actually see that grease sometimes appear in the toilet because you can't digest it, it just goes on through. That's got good and bad features to it. It's good because of your weight, but it can be a problem if you're not ready for it and not prepared for it. Uh, if you don't uh, have a place to get to the bathroom or something like that, you can have a problem. It's one of those times when you've got to go, you've got to go. Um, right. But I'm always glad because I know that my that bypass is still tummy. working. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Right. I'm always, if I don't see it for a long time, I start worrying and then Maybe I'll start digesting it better. just means I'm not eating as much grease. Greasy foods, yeah. yeah. So you're allowed to have greasy, junky kind of foods, but it should be always in moderation in small amounts. And if you go over that, you're going to have that indigestion of the fat. And it can also cause bloating and gas and diarrhea, but we won't let it go back on your tummy. And so that could interfere. Um, tips and pointers from the family to the other patients out there on the listening and video land? Or? Um, I'm delighted to see someone so young uh, here today. If there's anything that I could have done differently, it would have been that I wish I could have done it so much sooner. And uh, my niece was 26, I think, when we brought her out here. And it was one of the best things um, because she and I are so similar in a lot of our nature and uh, a lot of the choices that we've made in our lives and a lot of the problems we've had including being overweight from a young age and it's changed her her life completely so, really absolutely and I have her pictures and I'll have to bring them to you I think I left them in the car but um, she's doing fabulous she doing well? oh yeah absolutely fantastic so um, I think knowing to call when you think anything might be wrong is a big deal and as we talked about earlier I've lived through that with having um, a sister who had had a leak and didn't want to um, get any medical attention because she thought she was being silly and and a crybaby and, and that sort of thing and so um, it was a really good thing that we brought her back. Um, it changes the subject now don't you have somebody that we know or that I done who's out in your way who's getting too thin who needs to call me or something is there I actually have a cousin she lives in uh, New Jersey right, and cousin. she yeah She's too thin, right? she did get quite too thin and um, we got her uh, in with I think a better family physician in her area I'm not close enough to her to kind of help out but she's put on about 20 pounds oh, good, so okay. she's better so she avoided the revision yes so far yeah okay. so so what I heard is correct me if I'm wrong we heard like through so-and-so so-and-so that my cousin so-and-so is really too thin and looks like a skeleton looks awful blah 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 and had your surgery I'm going well but maybe she should call me yes. <laughs> and she never did so yes and, and which continues to frustrate me but that's I mean that's okay I mean but the, the danger is that if you get too thin you can go on to a complication and uh, we certainly can fix it if you get too thin on the other hand she just she shows something else which is that when you get to this bottom point at a year or two, there's a bounce up. So that over the 10 years of your history, you had a bounce of 10 to 20 pounds? Probably 25. 25 pounds mm -hmm. over a 10 year history. And that what we think that's not a criticism of the patient that the gut undergoes some adaptation. So if you get kind of too thin at one year and you can kind of fight through it by taking some extra food, oftentimes that two to five year bump will catch you and pull you out of it. So that's another kind of education. I hadn't heard about her improving, so that's good news. Well, one of the interesting things that I think it can happen if you don't call and talk to Dr. Rutledge about these things,